Hello, Chloe. It's 9.30 at night. Do you like my hat? I like my hat. Do you like my shirt? I like my shirt. Okay, I need to make a video now and stop looking at books on Amazon or I'm going to go crazy. Let's talk about the pin one problem. So this is your common microphone cable, commonly referred to by douchey and self-righteous engineers as an XLR cable. Its connectors look like this. On the male side, as you can see, there are three pins, and on the female side, there are three holes. Naturally and sexually, they go together. Now, you can't see because this MacBook camera is so crappy, but next to these little holes, there are numbers one, two, and three. So this hole right here on this side is hole number one. So that means that this pin on this side is pin number one, hence the pin one problem. Now, to explain the pin one problem, I have to talk a little bit about balanced audio. With balanced cables there are three connectors so that means there are three kind of wire areas running throughout the length of the cable. So with balanced audio the three connectors are hot, cold, and ground. Hot means that there's an active current running through it. Ground is the reference point by which everything references the voltages to zero. Because remember that a voltage isn't a value inherently in itself, it's the difference between two positions. You'll often hear voltages referred to as potential differences. Now for there to be a difference in potential, there has to be a reference point. That's what ground is. It's the reference point that we call zero volts because there's no current running through it. The last one is cold, and for balanced audio, that means something different than with regular, just good old cold wires. Hey, remember this guy? Sorry, I could only find silver sharpie so with your three connectors you're gonna have them each on each side of the cable here you have your positive here you have your negative and here you have your ground which I've illustrated as signal ground but it's probably not going to be signal ground and I'll get to that in a minute so if you're positive you have your sine wave or whatever kind of waveform and your ground is just no voltage, no current, just nothing. The thing that makes it balanced audio is that the negative is going to create an opposite sine wave of the positive. Then for balanced audio, at the input of the receiving device, or whatever, the negative will invert, and then add itself to the positive. I'm saying negative and positive, what I should be saying is hot and cold. So the cold will flip and add itself to the hot. And the reason why that's nice is, what if we get some kind of noise from lights, or some kind of magnetic field, or something like that. So maybe we get a spike here, and a spike here. Noise that is common to both the hot and cold receptacles are called common mode noises. And the nice thing is that if it's the same on each of them, when this inverts at the end at the input, that signal will be destroyed. It'll cancel out. So balanced signal is really nice, especially over long distances. So what's the pin one problem? Well, you remember how this little guy is supposed to have no current? Let me start by creating a chassis ground kind of setting. Chassis ground is really useful in audio devices because all of our devices are like encased in a metal box. So instead of going all the way out to an earth ground, which is happening kind of in the bigger picture of the system with your power cable, we'll just take the ground and like take a wire and attach it to the box like the metal casing that's called chassis ground so ideally the input of the XLR cable the pin one or the ground is going to go right into the chassis of the device however that's not really what happens in the assembly lines at the factories when they're making their devices they have this kind of it's like a, a solder kind of sheet and they just have all the devices on their circuit board and they just solder all of it not so that like it shorts out because there's an electric connection between all of them but it's more efficient than just soldering it individually and the problem with that is that the pin one or the ground doesn't always get connected right to the box sometimes they'll get flattened along the other circuits and the reason why that's a problem is now you have your ground going through all of this active circuitry and if the ground makes kind of a loop or something like that it can induce a current and that's a problem because a current in the ground will create an awful awful noise in your signal and that's like not removable so to sum up what I just said the ground should go right into the box that the device is cased in but it doesn't all the time due to factory conditions so let's say I have some signal coming into this side and it travels through the cable and it gets to this side well eventually in audio that signal is gonna have to get back so we have another cable coming out here and going here if we have a current in our ground that induces what's called a ground loop which is a current in the whole ground of your whole system and that's a problem so the way that we prevent this is quite simple. It's called lifting the ground. So we've removed the cap of the XLR cable, and you can see how it's connected to the wires through those little, like, clip things that kind of look like scissors. The red is the hot, and the blue is the cold, and if you look in there real closely, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see just a bare wire. The bare wire is the ground, and it's bare because it's not coiled up along the whole way. It actually becomes what's called a braided shield, and it actually covers the other two cables. So the way that we prevent a ground loop is we cut 
the ground at the end of the cable. That's called lifting the ground. You cut it, you fold it back, and you use this stuff that's right here. You see that? That's called heat shrink. You put it over there and you like hold a lighter under it and it shrinks over the bare wire. So that's just a convoluted method of how us engineers do anything. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Congratulations, you learned one more thing about audio engineering, and I will see you on Tuesday.